Uh, I started with that 61% shareholder revolt. It's such a sexy headline. Uh, how do you deal with that while you're trying to grow revenue and cut costs at the same time and they're still not lining up? Yeah, well, look, first thing, I'm, you know, the son of a teacher, so I know how privileged I am to do the job that I do and, and have the income that I, I do. Clearly, my remuneration is a matter for the board and the remuneration committee, not for me. Uh, I think the controversy was over uh, the bonus that I was paid that I used to buy shares in the company because I'm completely committed to the future of, of Pearson. This has been an incredibly frustrating time for shareholders. Uh, we've seen five years of declining college enrollments here in America at the same time as we're seeing huge disruption in our uh, college textbook business from the growth in, in rental. But I think it's also an incredibly exciting time for the company. We're investing a billion dollars in the digital transformation of the company. Uh, the $250 textbook is on the wane. The $100 digital courseware, all that content and pedagogy of the textbook, but much more adaptive, much more personalized, much more useful to students, much more helpful to teachers is with us. We're gonna win in that world. And we also have to then completely re-engineer the cost base of the company to ensure that we can provide greater value to students at that lower price and create growth opportunities for our shareholders. So uh, we are in the middle of, you know, so far we've taken thick end of a billion dollars of costs out of the business. We're planning to take another $400 million of costs. That's all enabled by making Pearson a simpler, more digital, leaner company. So very frustrating for shareholders but I really do think that whilst we've got another couple of tough years ahead of us, the reward there in the next three to five years is a very exciting one. So, so John, you and I have talked about it before. You inherited a company that was going through a lot of changes, the business going through changes. You also came after, if not a legend, a highly thought of CEO and Marjorie Scardino. Where exactly are you in that process? You said three years, you think you'd be out of it, and what will Pearson's look like at the end of that three to five year period? Yeah, and uh, thanks David, you know, and. Uh, Pearson's been a company that's in the business for the thick end of 200 years and, you know, growth does not always go in, in straight lines and it's been a tougher time certainly than I thought it would have been uh, five years ago uh, when, I, when I took on the role from, from Marjorie. But I, I do think we're making progress. One can't be certain, but I really think that if we can get through uh, the next 12 to 18 months, then the, the long-term prospects for the company, as I say, look better. I think what will be is uh, more direct, much more directly engaged uh, with students, a much more digital company, uh, a much more effective company in terms of the outcomes that we deliver, and one that I think from a shareholder point of view starts to look uh, rather more stable, rather more reliable, much greater visibility in terms of the earning streams that we can deliver each year. So John, in a word or two, what will determine success or failure for your plan? Uh, I think success is getting person growing again, delivering better outcomes for teachers and students across America, and getting, a, as I say, much more stable earning stream so we don't have the, the shocks and surprises that we've had over the last few years. Uh, we are, I think, creating some really e exciting partnerships, uh, working with IBM Watson to introduce a cognitive tutor, bringing the benefits of augmented reality to the next generation of how nurses and surgeons are trained. Right. Really exciting future for the company. We're going to be the winner in digital learning.